you may have heard the term visualization. Now, I used to think that this was a bit of a scam, like manifestation or law of attraction. I've had rough relationship with these terms. But lately, over the last one or two years, the more I read neuroscience, there are some things about these terms that I've understood. And while I still believe with all my heart that no one should pay money to attend any courses on how to do any of this, I do think it is important that people realize what happens when you visualize, what happens in the brain and how can it help you and also understand that this is something that everyone can and should do. So in today's video, I'm going to break down what visualization is, how it can help you and how to do it. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, this is your sign to do so. I'm Dr. Siddharth Warrior. I'm a neurologist and on this channel, we talk about neuroscience and everything that can make you live your life better. Let's talk about visualization. So to understand visualization, you have to understand a couple of things about the brain. So let's look at the brain. If this is your brain, there is a part that is responsible for action. Anytime you want to do something, this is the part that gets active and that part is called as the motor cortex. It's also called M1. So from now on, we'll call it M1. Now, M1 is part of your prefrontal cortex. Now, if you've been following my channel, you know that the prefrontal cortex is the most evolved, rational, logical part of the brain. So whenever you have to act, even if you have to lift up a phone, your M1 or your motor cortex is acting. Now, your M1 cannot act in isolation. Something has to tell your motor cortex on what is the action that you need to do. The part of the brain that does this is an area right behind M1 called as the supplementary motor cortex or SMA. Now, the supplementary motor cortex has the job of planning a movement. So whatever it is that you set out to do, how you do it is decided by your supplementary motor cortex. Now imagine if you have to do something you've never done before, like pick up a cricket bat and face a fast bowler and hit a six. Now those are a series of movements that your body has never done, which means that your primary motor cortex has never had to perform those actions, which means your supplementary motor area does not even have a plan on how to do this. So if I put you in front of a fast bowler, you will fail miserably. Now what if your supplementary motor area already has a plan in place on what to do. Wouldn't you be more comfortable when you are facing that difficult situation? This is where visualization comes in. Visualization is a way of giving your brain a trial run, making your brain think that it is going through a situation, forcing your supplementary motor area to come up with a plan of action and making your primary motor cortex fire those networks as if it is doing the real thing. In other words, it is like an action rehearsal, going through a situation and learning from that situation without actually doing that thing. Now that is visualization in a nutshell. Now there have been studies of musicians imagining playing a piano and their brain networks lighting up as if they were actually playing it. There are studies of athletes like footballers imagining scoring a goal and the brain area that controls their feet light up. In other words, the brain reacts to an imaginary situation just like it would to a real situation. And the more clearly you visualize a scene, the more is the impact in your brain. So that is how visualization works at a neurological level. Now let's talk about how to visualize. What is the best way to go about it? Now, the mistake that most people make is they directly start imagining the final stage, the victory lap, the success at the end of the road. So if you want to become a marathon runner, you might imagine winning the marathon and holding up the gold medal. Or if you're a student preparing for your NEET exam, you might visualize getting rank one. This is a very common mistake and it can actually harm you for two reasons. Number one, the dopamine kick that you get from imagining that final goal might be enough to demotivate you. You might think that you've already succeeded. Now, why should you put in effort? And number two, it doesn't really help you get to that final stage. So the right way to visualize is to not visualize the final outcome, but instead to visualize the process. 
If you are a student aiming to give a competitive exam, what you should be visualizing is waking up every day, reaching the library, sitting there with your book and focusing for eight to 10 hours every day. That is the process that you should be visualizing. And the more you do it, the easier it will be for you to actually get that hard work done. The way I think about it is visualization is to hard work what warm up is to exercise. If you visualize properly, hard work becomes a little easier, a little safer, a little more bearable. Just like how warming up before an intense workout session in the gym is good for your body. It keeps you flexible, it prepares you for all the heavy lifting you have to do. Now, if you are just starting out, a word of advice that I have is start visualizing small, and build slowly. Visualize small things like waking up at a particular time or putting on your shoes, reaching the gym. Don't visualize large actions that might be difficult for you. And if you do this, this loop of visualization followed by action builds a cycle of trust. Now, one of the commonest things that we all struggle with is that as things get difficult, we start losing trust in ourselves especially when we get anxious or our mood is low, you might start questioning yourself. We all get self-doubt that will we actually do it? I know that I've said I will do this, but will I really? A part of visualization is also to reinstate that trust in ourselves. Imagining you will do something and actually doing it helps you believe in yourself more. Now, there is just one more thing that I wanted to share with you. In life, you are constantly faced with choices. At any given point of time, we have a choice to do something that is hard and something that is slightly easier. Now, if you have not prepared yourself beforehand, the chances are that you will always go for the easier choice. That is because when that moment of choice comes, your brain will always act in an efficient way. It will look for cost and benefit and it will think, oh, let me just take the easier route because why should I bother doing the hard thing? One of the benefits of visualization is that if you have thought about doing the hard thing, if you have put your brain through that exercise of imagining yourself doing the hard thing, when that moment comes, you will find that choosing to do the hard thing becomes a little easier. And while making that hard choice may not seem like much once or twice, over a period of time, you'll find that it compounds and gradually your life takes a turn for the better as you go on making the harder choice. If you have any doubts about this topic, let me know in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed this video. Hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye everyone. Take care.